Hey, Joe Hughes here from Contractor Dynamics here in the United States, and I am talking with my friend Brendan Tully of the Search Engine Shop in Australia, and we connected via a private online community, and there's a question that was posed about a couple weeks ago by a mutual friend in the community, and his question is about the future. So his question is, if you were going to ask excuse me, if you were going to give a talk about the future of local marketing, what would you cover? What's going to win in three to five years or 10? This person had some ideas around search, uh, voice search, mobile, video, uh, content marketing and whatnot. So Brendan and I connected on, on this particular question and we both had some comments and they're very similarly aligned. So we said, hey, let's uh, let's hop on Skype, let's hit record, and let's just get some different perspectives on what is the future of local online marketing. And just as a little bit of a background, uh, my company's Contractor Dynamics. We provide websites and local online marketing solutions for contractors and builders, mostly in the U.S. And I will let Brendan uh, intro his company, and then we'll take it away from there. Yeah, ours is quite similar. Um, similar, similar sort of thing, local business marketing, AdWords, SEO hosting for primarily small businesses in Australia. So similar, but we don't really have a, a specific market niche. And um, yeah, I'm curious to get your take because we work primarily in Australia, which can be quite different to the US. In some ways, the US gets the new toys and new things earlier than Australia and it's, it's kind of like a... Uh, yeah, we can take the temperature with what's going on in the US and see what's coming down the pipe for Australia. And also some things just don't... Things that are big in the US aren't really so big in Australia. Like Yelp is big in the US, but it's really... No one really talks about Yelp in Australia. And there's no real Craigslist in Australia either. There's, we have something called Gumtree, which is like the Craigslist of Australia. So, yeah, I'm interested to hear um, your take on what works... Well, what's working and what what you see is the future from a US perspective so sure so I usually talk frame this conversation around consumer buying behavior so a typical contractor that we talk with about becoming a client is in a situation where they're an established business they've had some success and usually that success has been due to word of mouth or maybe some yellow pages or some traditional marketing and they're realizing that that's, that's no longer going to be enough, that word of mouth, to sustain their business or even take their business to that next level. And they understand at some level that there's an opportunity to leverage the web to grow their business, to get new, new customers in the door, and to either pass that business on to the next generation or just to continue to grow it in their local market. And so we try to have that conversation around consumer buying behavior has changed because nowadays with the accessibility of information online, we all want to do our own research, right? We, we all want to do, um, do some reading and read reviews and, and compare different companies. And we're taking that buying decision much, much further on our own before we're contacting a local company, whether it's a product company or a service company to do business with them. So, so what we really uh, try to focus on is making sure that we're our clients have an overall web presence and not just a singular website. So we really stress the fact that you know, your website doesn't exist in the silo. Google's not just looking at your website anymore. Uh, neither are people. We want to see different things like social media profiles. We want to see reviews and uh, photos of your work if it's a photo-centric business and things like that. So uh, the big thing that we stress is you can't just sign up for a website and maybe sign up for a small online marketing package and expect to really make a difference. It's got to be a more cohesive, holistic effort. Yeah, I agree. It seems like, um, yeah, I totally agree with the way consumers operate and interact with businesses has changed. Like when we started back in 2008, the conversation we had with clients is you, you had to convince them that they needed a website. Like it was, you were going from no website to having a website. And over time that changed too. Okay. People left, you know, they accepted that they business owners accepted they needed a website so you didn't have to sell them on that anymore and then the sell was hey you need to do some adwords or seo so you rank higher on google now i think 
as you said, like we see the same thing. It's no longer enough just to rank high in Google. You need to have a whole strategy around your, the whole online presence. And, you know, it's great if you rank number one in Google, but what if you have bad reviews? Like that's, it's not enough just to be there. You have to get the click and then you actually, you know, you have to sell like the, the, the fight used to be, you know, who's number one in Google. Now it's traffic is cheap. You know, you can buy the traffic, you can, you know, rankings inevitable if you're working with an SEO company that's any good. So it just takes time and then you can buy the traffic using AdWords or Facebook ads or some other online ad advertising platform. So again, the, the traffic, the cost of traffic is going down to a degree or it's easier to get the traffic. So now the, the battleground has become who can sell the best online. And yeah, totally agree that you really need a well-rounded strategy and it. Like it, it, there used to be like, this is the business and this is the website and they were two separate things and business own, like the website was almost a, a second thought. Like it was like when I get time to doing the web stuff, I'll do it. Um, whereas now it's really a key part of the business. It's, it's kind of if, if the website and the online piece doesn't work, then for the majority of businesses that they're, they're really going to struggle to grow and be competitive and it, they might be able to get away with it, ignoring it in the short term still for the next few years. But I think, moving forward you know if you know looking out five or ten years time the businesses that are going to stay in business are going to be the ones that take it seriously and you know except that it's the internet's here to stay and the way the consumers you know look for you know companies to deal with and make buying decisions is totally tied into the web and web behavior so Yes, I completely agree. I mean, I don't want to be fear mongering at all by any means, but it's uh, it seems that the, that gap between the businesses that are really embracing this and the businesses that are ignoring it is, is widening. And I guess there's a risk that the businesses that kind of ignore it are not going to be around in five or ten years. Yeah, and it's Would you um, agree? yeah, I think that the tipping point was when smartphones became everyone has a smartphone now. Like over the last. Between I think 2010 to 2013, people still had you know basic phones, and then it's it's just moved where a phone is just a smartphone now. There's you know nobody's buying a, a new phone that's I guess a, a dumb feature phone. So that means everybody has internet in their pocket. So that's the first place they go to look when they're looking for anything. If they're even if they're in a physical retail store, they you know if they have a phone with them and they can you know bring up 10 competitors in less than five seconds they just open the phone and do a google search so um i think there's a traditionally there was businesses well business owners could focus on their craft you know you could start a you know a electrical or plumbing business and you could be a plumber with a handful of you know you could have a small team of five people and you could primarily focus on doing plumbing stuff all day long you could spend three quarters of the day just being a plumber work with the team and take a few customer calls or whatever. But I think today, really, as someone running sort of, you know, a plumbing business or any sort of business, really, the focus needs to be more on the business rather in the rather than in the business. And I think that's, that's kind of where, I, when you say the gap is widening, I think that's one of the key factors is the guys who are really, or the businesses that are really making it online have, you know, they spend a significant portion of time thinking about, what customers doing on the web, changing things on the website, you know, making things better. Um, the focus is more on the on the business rather than the, the working in the business. I think that's that's a key part of it too. I don't know what your thoughts are. Yes, I completely agree. And and I I'm sure you'll or I'm guessing you'll say a similar thing about your client base. We do have clients that want to pay us to quote unquote just make the phone ring, right? Do our thing, make the phone ring, I'll handle it from there. And we can do it, and we do it. However, our most successful clients are the ones who are involved. They're they're more collaborative. So, like I said, they're thinking about these things. They're waking up and thinking about how can I market my business better? How can I sell my services better? How can I sell my products better? And they're giving us feedback. We're getting on phone calls, discussing their marketing, the results, and adjusting our strategy where we might need to. Uh, they're getting us assets, whether that's photos or content or they're working on getting reviews on a regular basis and really systematizing that in their business so that that's ex exactly what we see you know every day um those types of business owners or business managers really embracing the marketing and making sure that it's 
like you said, a, a piece of their overall business is kind of baked into every aspect of their business. It's not an afterthought. It's not, all right, I'm going to go do my plumbing for eight hours a day. And then at night, at 10 o'clock at night, when I finally sit down, I'm going to maybe look at my website and upload a picture or something like that. Yeah, that's not really going to that's not really going to cut it much, much longer, I don't think. Yeah, I think it's, uh, some of it is a hangover from I don't know about the US, but in Australia, like 15, 10 or 15 years ago, the Yellow Pages guy would come out, your, your sales rep would come out, you'd have a conversation for an hour about what your Yellow Pages advertising is going to look like for the year, you write him a big check, and then you forget about it for 12 months and the phone rings. And I think that's sort of where, you know, there were Yellow Pages was the place people looked when they were, you know, looking for service providers or companies. I think there's, to a degree, that a lot of uh, business owners have been trained by that, that, you know, that that approach doesn't work anymore. So um, the thing is as well, while the market has shifted and it can be scary, especially for people who aren't so tech savvy, understanding how the whole web works. And I mean, there's a lot of people out there who will happily take their money and do shady things. And I think that also scares them off. There's so, I mean, we've hundreds of stories of, of business owners who've spent that, you know, 10 or 15 grand on a website and it's, it's garbage and doesn't work and doesn't do anything. Um, but you know, it really isn't that hard when you break down the, the individual components. It's, it, it takes work, but it, it's easy, like baking in that, that review request process. Um, it's not, it's free, basically. There's no real cost to asking customers for reviews and systemizing it. It just takes a little bit of work and a little bit of attention to get it done. Um, I think there's just this tendency to see online as this big blob and and that scares people off and it's confusing and they have to learn something new um but i don't think it has to be the case it sounds like like you said we don't want to kind of fear monger but it's not when you break it down to the individual components it's actually quite easy to make the web work it just needs continual attention i guess in the business it's an ongoing part of the business now and i think also um, one key thing we should probably point out is that it shouldn't be confusing. It shouldn't be kind of this black box. Like it, you should, whoever you're working with when you're doing online marketing strategy, they should be able to explain the, the whole strategy in kind of a page of bullet points and you should be able to understand what the individual components are and why you're doing them and they should make sense. I, I don't know if you, it should all be logical, right? Like it shouldn't be so confusing that you don't know what's going on and, and don't understand why certain things need to happen in, in the business or what you know why they're being done online or what the benefit is of doing those. Yes, absolutely. And we, we talk with prospective customers all the time about this and they say, I just talked with one today and he says, Hey, I'm I'm still under contract with my marketing company for another three months, but I, I'm not really I don't think I'm getting any results from it. I'm really not sure. So you know, can we talk and maybe figure something out? And that's just, unfortunately, such a common conversation where, like you said, there's there's companies out there that are all too happy to take a business owner's money and not really do anything or show them any progress or so, show them any reporting or any results. And therefore, the business owner does think it's a black box. So it's, okay, I'm going to pay money and they're going to, like you said, go back to that Yellow Pages um, analogy uh, I'm going to pay someone money and they're just going to make my phone ring magically. Well, it doesn't work like that. And your web or marketing company should be showing you, should be transparent in what they're doing and where you stand, where your marketing dollars are going, and most importantly, what you're getting in return for those marketing dollars. So I think that that gives uh, some companies in our industry a bad name who are, who are trying to do things the right way and be transparent and be upfront. Um, but I think that's, uh, that's a major, major problem. Um, what do you normally, how do you normally approach that, Brendan, when someone comes to you, how do you try to, do you try to educate them? I know that you have a podcast, you probably try to point people toward for different topics that they might have questions about. Yeah, well, we initially grew the business, um, through a series of in-person workshops and training. So we won, um, together with a few of our, um, business partners. So we partnered with, a handful of complementary businesses. They weren't all online marketing agencies. They were, you know, business consultancy, a PR firm, a photography uh, studio, and we won some government funding to do workshops and training for small business owners. So traditionally, that was how. Well, that's how we 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 won that contract in 2010, um, and we grew the business 
that way do through doing a lot of in-person workshops and just really like talking to business owners and just breaking it down and showing them the building blocks of what goes into online marketing strategy and um how it all works and they were amazed because they were they were coming from the place of i'm spending 10 or 15 grand for a website it doesn't work i can't edit it it doesn't make the phone ring so that's that's what has worked in the past for us but now we have the podcast like you said so when we started the podcast the first 20 episodes were on just workshop topics so we did workshops on lots of different things so you know google adwords seo web design so we had a podcast episode basically on each of the topics and what the common questions were we were getting asked so now it's a case of we don't do so many workshops anymore but when someone has a question then rather than having to explain it to them over the phone we can send them a couple of podcast links and that's basically the material we'd present in um in a workshop in person and the other thing we do is just if we get a new inquiry, we'll look at where they are today, what sort of results they want to get, and then you know we'll we'll map out a you know half page strategy of how they can get from where they are today to where they want to go. And it's a case of like I said that they should never be they should under while they might not understand the mechanics of SEO and how to rank a website, they should understand the the concepts around it. Like the they should understand the high level summary of how the strategy works. Like simple stuff like you need customer reviews, you need reviews from customers on your google maps listing your yelp listing your facebook page i mean that that makes common sense yeah, that's common sense like it it doesn't need really you know you don't need a day of workshops to understand that reviews are important and you need to manage the reviews you know other simple things like you need google analytics to measure the website traffic and what visitors are doing the website uh you, you need to rank number one for your business name is a common one so just we're just not out of strategy with them. Like these are what we think we should do to, to you know, get you from A to B. And then we, you know, talk to their budget and, you know, different businesses have different price points. So often we'll step the, you know, we'll start small and as they get more success, then we'll step the budget up if, if that's going to make the phone ring. But all of our stuff is really based around education and just, I think there's in Australia, I don't know about the U S but there's a, the web industry in Australia has made a very, good business out of confusing prospects and um, just throwing out all these guarantees. I mean, you've seen it and I'm sure it's in the US, the don't pay until you rank nonsense and all this sort of stuff, which are just ways of, you know, getting customers to spend money and a lot of them, if it's too good to be true, basically, it's it probably is. So um, all our stuff is about being transparent, educating the customer because they, it's not going to work the relationship's not going to work long term unless they understand what we're doing for them um, they're spending this money each month or whatever and they need to understand where it's going and why it's going there so yeah everything we do is based around you know, getting them up to the level so at least they can make good decisions about you know online marketing spend and advertising decisions and, and things like that Absolutely. Yeah, it's funny you use some of the language, the exact same language that we use. And here we are, uh, you know, thousands of miles apart. But we, we go through a very similar process with our clients uh, or with our prospects, rather. We actually do a video walkthrough of exactly where they're ranking and what their competitors look like, how strong their competitors are, some things that their competition are doing. And then from there, we try to map out some bullet point opportunities for them to position their website better, generate more business that way. And it really is. My line that I always use is uh, before the presentation starts, I say to Mr. Prospect, Mr. Prospective Contractor, my goal of this presentation is to provide you with some background knowledge as far as how online marketing works. So whether you work with us or whether you work with someone else or whether you just continue to do it yourself, then at least you have that education, that knowledge to make informed decisions about your business and to know that you should make those decisions based on the data and based on what's in front of you, not just kind of guesswork. So I think that the more for a business owner, considering working with a marketing or a web company, you want to make sure that the company is showing you the data and they're making decisions based on that data and they're not just throwing darts against the wall to, to try this or try that. So you want to make sure that they're really digging into these things, like Brendan said, and uh, you don't need to understand all the nuances and all the technical details. But uh, like like Brendan said, it's very it's it's not very complicated. Um, it can be hard because it does take time, or it can take time and effort. 
uh, but it shouldn't be very complicated uh, to understand. Yeah, it shouldn't be confusing, right? You should, if someone's asking you to spend three thousand, five thousand dollars a month on marketing, they should be able to say, "Well, this is what we're going to going to do and why," and you should be able to understand that. Um, the other thing we say have clients do is just test a marketing channel for four to six weeks or, or three months um, because it may or may not work. There's no there's no guarantees that if you spend money on Facebook ads or Google ads that it's going to make the phone ring. So one thing that um, we found very effective and customers are very happy with is saying, well, Facebook ads are an opportunity. We don't know whether they're going to work for sure. We're not 100% sure they may work, they may not work. They may work for any of this type of product or service. Let's set a trial budget that's not going to you know, send you broke um, and let's run Facebook ads for six weeks and, and see what happens. It might be you know, $1,000 a month budget. It might be $5,000 a month budget, but it's like this is what we're going to do as a marketing test and then let's sit down and review the results together. We've spent so much money. Has it generated X number of return um, or you know, made sales or whatever? And I think that... It's not a again coming back to the yellow pages era. It's not something that you you know you sign a check and you're committed to it forever. I think as a business owner, those taking a short term approach. If you're not confident and working with a with a marketing company, I think you should be able to you know if they if they're not willing to do a, a three month trial or a short campaign to the, to test the market, I think that probably um, you know that might be a bit of a red flag. So I don't know what your approach is there, but that has worked pretty well particularly for i guess a smaller for the smaller clients who they have very limited marketing budget and they need to make it work really well i think those limited test campaigns have worked really well for us and for them too yes i would agree and uh for us we we don't do any long-term contracts um i come from a contractor background i grew up in the construction industry myself so I understand the pain point of signing that 12-month agreement with some sort of company. You get a few months in, and you're really not happy. You're not seeing progress. You don't know what's going on, but you're still stuck for six or eight or ten months, and that's really not valuable for anyone. So what we always tell prospects is, hey, you know, we have no long-term contracts or agreements. We want to earn your business every month. However, it, these things do take time to kind of build up. So give us a few months. Give us three or four months. And let us let us show you how this stuff works. Let us build some value into your business. Let us get you some new business, and then we'll go from there. And usually, that 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 really helps people to uh, feel comfortable knowing that they're not getting locked into some big transaction. It's more of a relationship that you know, we're going for the long term relationship as well. Um, another aspect of that, and I know Brendan, you guys build websites as well for your local clients, as as do we for probably uh, ninety. 5% of our clients, we start off with a, a marketing plan and then a website. Now, if someone doesn't really have the budget to invest in lead generation, SEO, or PPC, or Facebook, or anything like that, at least having that highly converting website, that website that converts visitors into leads, can be a huge bonus for their business, even if they're just word of mouth, right? So if you know if my best friend or my, my cousin refers me to a local business, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go online and check out that business. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust my friend. I'm going to trust my cousin, but I'm going to verify. Trust but verify. So, even if you're not doing any lead generation, just starting with a website can just be be a game changer because those referrals that go to your business go to your website. All of a sudden, you have a nice website that's engaging. You have the right messaging, the right positioning. You have some nice call to act calls to action. And everything's really laid out nice for them to see and for them to easily take that next step. So I think a lot of a lot of local businesses don't understand the, the value or the impact that a modern, responsive, uh, highly converting website can have as opposed to just your your standard, you know, three or four year old template site that you pay a couple hundred bucks for. So, um, I, I, have you seen something similar? It sounds like you have. Yeah, I totally agree. I think I commented in that that. Um that post in that forum that you mentioned before that it's really like we're seeing the the old approach was there's online and offline marketing and now it's there's really no difference like it's it's all just marketing and you, you're dealing with people they're not online or offline and you'll find even if you're running let's say offline advertising like print advertising or tv advertising the first thing people are going to do is go to your website so 
totally agree that you know those offline or real world channels and word of mouth that's you know it all heads back to the website and while you know it's it can be scary and there's a lot to learn about as a business owner there's a lot to learn about you know online marketing and, and everything else there's there is an upside to it in that you now have this low cost 24 7 sales guy sitting there interacting with customers all day long like 3 a.m in the morning there's if there's a customer on the website you know the the website's working and um it's it costs a lot less than a, a full-time sales guy as well um one thing we do, uh, one kind of concept we, we try and teach in our workshops, and we've talked about it on our podcast a lot, is websites that really work well uh, generally take the first step of the sales process that you do in person and they put that online. So typically, you know, the the top 10 or 20 questions that a new prospect is, is asking, if the website can answer those, then it's doing a really good job as that salesperson. And also if the first step of the sales process is for the customer to schedule a, a call or book an appointment or, or whatever it is, or you know, whatever that first step of the sales process is, if the website can do that in an automated fashion without you need, needing to be involved, if, you know, the customer needs to schedule an appointment for you to come out and do a quote, then if the website allows the customer to do that then that's going to work really well so even like you said even if they're not actively doing seo or they don't have any active uh, online ad campaigns word of mouth customer comes to the website they have their you know three questions they need to, to need answered answered by the website um and then they want to proceed to the next step and they can hit a, a button to you know schedule in a call out where you come and talk to them in person or schedule a phone call i think that can work amazingly well and doesn't have to cost a lot of money either. A lot, certainly a lot cheaper than, than having a full-time sales guy. That's for sure. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I was listening to one of your recent podcast episodes and I think the example that you used was, uh, say a doctor's office, you know, someone's online 10 o'clock at night and they want to book an appointment. Well, you should give them the opportunity to book that appointment to become a new patient or a new customer. You shouldn't have to, you shouldn't make them wait until the morning until you're open where they have to call and you have to answer the phone and it's this whole manual process. So uh, I, th I think that's a huge thing. I think, what do they say? The, the more, the better job you do at marketing, the less, the less sales you have to do or something like that. Something so like that, yeah. the, the more that you are answering those FAQs on your website, the more that you're explaining the process, the more that you're educating your market, the less that you have to sit there on the phone and go over the same questions over and over. One thing we've done as well that works very well for um, a lot of the more uh, bigger sales or more complex sales, like someone renovating a house, that's going to be a long decision-making process for them. They're going to have to think about it. There's going to be multiple discussions they're having offline before they you know, even take the first step to engaging a contractor or whatever. So one thing we've, we talk about with a lot of clients is having a, a downloadable or a printable that a customer can take and take it offline. They can print it out to kind of grease the wheels of that um, that offline conversation that they're having with their spouse or they're thinking it over or doing research. It doesn't even have to be huge. It can be two or three pages, you know, with some basic information or it can be, a, you know, a basic guide, the things they need to know before renovating their home if they need to get, you know, local city or council approval or something like that. That's... You know, having something to grease the grease those offline grease the wheels of those offline conversations um, can be very powerful as well. And again, that would be the same thing that you do in person. If someone calls you up and they're thinking about doing you know a major project on their home or something like that, they're probably going to want some information from you. The website can do that automatically. Like you probably and it sounds like it's a whole lot of work to create this information or create these things, but it's not really because most business owners are having these conversations already with customers they just really need to get them down on paper and then get that on the website that's what what goes on the website is really not that much different to what you're talking about with customers in person so yeah it, it's really not and that, and that's great if you're talking about seo i mean that's that's great seo because these days people are searching for questions you know how much how much is a new kitchen renovation going to cost or uh any other service or product you can think of people are actually punching in questions to Google. So the more that you can answer those questions that your real live prospects have, the more you can answer those online, the better off you're going to be. Um, yeah, Brendan, to your point about, you know, a, a local uh, renovation contractor 
we have a lot of clients who are a lot of prospects who complain that they they're not getting paid for all the time that they spend on going out to someone's house and doing a walk around, providing an estimate and all that. Uh, but these are guys that are probably you know answering the phone and driving out to some location, not giving the prospect, the homeowner, any information. And they're frustrated because they're not winning these projects. So I really like your point about providing them with that. We would consider it consumer awareness content. So uh, content that you can give your prospective customers on how to make those informed, smart decisions. Give them some criteria by which to evaluate your services. Because at the end of the day, if they don't have criteria to evaluate you, then they're just going to default to choosing on the lowest price. And I think that's where a lot of frustration comes through. Mm -hmm. So it, it goes back to that website content to content as well. If you can beat your competitors at providing the best content, the most valuable content on your site, not only are people going to like that, your prospects are going to like that. Search engines love that as well. They're getting smarter and smarter at understanding which websites, which web pages are actually the most valuable for people. And on that point, uh, Brendan, on, on your most recent podcast, I think it was, you're talking about some things that, uh, five things that, that local businesses can do to, to kind of improve their marketing. And I really, I love the line, I'm going to steal it, about <laughs> people don't buy, people don't buy keywords, they buy products or services. Yep. And I thought that was just, that, that is great because we get... A lot of business owners come and and they're like, all right, well, you know, what keywords are going to optimize my site for? We got to put in the right keywords in here and, and there, and they don't really. Again, it comes from a place of just lack of understanding or maybe being miseducated along the way. But uh, what I'm tying this into is the content on your website. You want to make sure that you have a page for each one of the services that you offer or each product category that you offer. Uh, the lo different locations that you might service if you're a service area business. And again, that, that content is going to be very valuable for the people visiting your website. And it's also going to be very valuable for search engines to understand where you provide your services and what exactly you do. Yeah, 100%. I think that the keywords is definitely that 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 worked five or eight years ago that was that's kind of the old style of online marketing. But absolutely, one of the first things we have customers do is sit down for 15 minutes and just brainstorm a list of all the individual products and services they sell and and the brands as well and most often that they don't have pages for each one of those on the website and simply by having the page there like let's forget about rankings or google traffic or whatever customer can't buy it if they don't know you're selling it so just by having that content on the website often sales automatically go up by and no small amount like 20 or 30 percent and that's just you know, a page of content's not really that much. Like we say that a, the pay, the content needs to be generally at least one and a half scrolls long. So, um, you know, that's not that hard. That's five paragraphs and an image. So, um, yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward and it's free as well. Like you, a business owner can take the information and run with it. You don't really even need to have an online marketing person do that for you. You can do that yourself. So, um, but yeah, if people, people don't buy keywords. They absolutely buy products and services. So. <laughs> um, what is some of the, I know you talk with a lot of business owners uh, throughout Australia and, and throughout the world as well. What are some of the common mistakes that you see in their thinking and, and their approach to to thinking about online marketing and, and the web and all that? Well, that, yeah, the keywords one was definitely probably number one um, because and and what we were saw in the workshops that we've done is. Uh, small business owners learn a little bit of SEO and then they, they see that keywords field and the back of their website and stuff that full of keywords. So that's probably <laughs> the big one is that short-sighted focus on uh, the keywords. And probably I want to be number one on Google. Like if, if your online marketing strategy is I want to be number one on Google, that's, that's probably an indication you need to do some more work around that. Um, and probably the the bigger one that's becoming increasingly more important because Google has made some changes in the last few months that really make reviews around the web stand out a lot more is, you know, really focusing on getting, uh, monitoring the reviews around the web and being consistent around getting positive reviews. And the only way to do that really is to systemize it into the business. Um, yeah, those are probably the top three. So focus on keywords focus on only focused on google rankings and google's not the only game in town there's plenty of other places that you can get traffic from 
and then not paying attention to the reviews. Because the thing is, if you deal with a thousand customers, it's inevitable that you're going to get someone who is un- unhappy or upset or their expectations weren't met. And you know, eventually they're going to put a negative review online. It's, it's a case of you have to accept that's going to happen. And the only way to combat that is to showcase the, the good work you've done and, and get those positive reviews. So that's, on, yeah, on my hit list, those are, are probably the initial things we look at and the quick wins that, that we tackle when dealing with clients. So I don't know, what, what do you see on your end? Because we deal with different markets. So the US is quite often ahead of Australia. Um, in Google updates get rolled out there first and, and new technologies get rolled out there first. So is that the same on your end or you see different things? Yes, absolutely. And I think... Uh... I think you use the word systematize a couple times and that's really the key for us. I always stress consistency and, and when we're talking to a contractor, uh, I'm quick to point out that a lot of contractors will try different things. They'll try different tactics here and there. Uh, maybe they'll try some Facebook ads for a couple weeks. Maybe they'll try some AdWords for a, a very small budget. That's really not going to have any impact. And so they're trying all these different tactics, but not a lot of, uh, contractors have the patience or the long-term thinking or just the resources to do things consistently. And that's, what's going to get them re- the results over the long run. It's like the compound effect of having interest in a bank. It's just going to, eventually it's going to amount to a, a significant result. Right. Mm-hmm. So we find that just being consistent and, and like you said, systematizing those things, a lot of our clients may not be very large businesses, so they need to figure out a way to, to make sure that these things are happening in the background, whether they're actively focusing on them or not. So if you have an office manager, make make sure he or she can handle some of these things. Maybe you're offloading some of them to your web or marketing company. Uh, but just making sure that these things are being done uh, on a regular basis and not just do something for two months because your web guy told you to and then move on to something else but forget about the first thing mm-hmm. so i think the businesses that really they really nail it are the ones that have a bunch of different things going on so I, we talked with a new client in um in uh, kansas city the other day and he said he laid out everything they have going on so they have someone doing blogging they have someone doing newsletters they have someone doing social media and i was talking with the business owner and he's doing none of it but these pieces are all being done on a consistent basis and I, I think that's that's really the word that that we focus on is consistency so um so I, so back to you know kind of the mistakes that we see people making with their approach it would be kind of this short term slash tactical approach where they think that all right well, i had a really bad month this month and I, I really need to turn things up and make next month much better so let me try this this thing i just read about it on online let me try this thing <laughs> And uh, just kind of doing piecemeal without that overall strategy. And, and going back to what we said before in the conversation that this, the marketing needs to be baked into your, your entire business. It's not just kind of a layer that you throw on top once in a while. Uh, so, so that's the big thing we see. Do you have a, a, is there a minimum advertising budget that you recommend or monthly advertising budget you recommend to your clients to, to, you know, to get results, to see results, a realistic budget? It really comes down to a lot of it for our clients comes down to their geographic area. So if you're in a big metropolitan area, of course, there's going to be a lot more competition. If you're in a small suburban area, there might not be as much competition. And then again, it depends where they're starting. So if they have a new domain, a new website, they're starting from scratch right now. It's going to take a lot more work to get that initial velocity to get them going. Whereas if they've been in business for 10 years, they've been doing some things pretty well. And they just kind of need that that push and the steer in the right direction. Uh, there might be less work involved. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we work with a client, when we we propose work to a prospect, like I said, we go through this video analysis, and really the purpose of it is to educate them. But another uh, product of that is that we can start to build out their marketing plan and start to propose a budget that would help them actually get results. And so, you know, with a lot of, cl- a lot of prospects, they kind of have this, this low expectation of what things should cost, right? Mm-hmm. They've, they've had experience paying a few hundred bucks a month, but you know, my retort is I try to say it in a nice way. You, you, you have that experience, but you also have the experience of not getting any results, which is why we're, we're talking, right? Yeah. So 
there's you know there's a minimum effective dose that that you need to get to to expect to see results and if maybe you don't have the budget like you said you can start small possibly um but you really can't go too small in my opinion because i don't want to i don't want to go too small and still i wouldn't have the confidence to tell the business owner to expect any sort of significant results yeah so uh Usually the budget is more than than they than they had anticipated, but again, everything's changing these days, and the the space is limited. Whether you're doing AdWords or SEO or any other online marketing campaigns, uh, there's competition out there, so you need to make sure that you, you you have enough to get in the game. Yeah, and the thing is, like once these while there, there might be initial ramp up period, it might take a few months to see like solid results or have results that you know you can say definitively this is working um the marketing spend should be making money ultimately so if you know we have had customers in the past who said we can't do we can't afford adwords this month and i like, i'll dig in i dig into that and like you you understand that 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 actually makes the phone ring here's the data it's not it's not that you can't afford it it's that there's something else wrong in the business um like the marketing spend actually generates it should be generating more money if you spend a two thousand dollars on marketing this month that should be generating at least two or three times that in terms of revenue at at a minimum so um, oh yeah yeah i think it, as a business owner you need to be careful understanding that it actually should not be an expense it's it's going to take a few months to see a solid return but it should be a case of you're putting a dollar in and getting five or ten dollars back and you should be happy to spend that money i mean for the the advertising we do, I'm like I'm happy to spend that because I can see it's it's making me money. If I turn that off, then I actually get less money at the end of the day. So it's probably an important distinction to make. I think. Yeah, I mean, think about it. It's an amazing time that we live in where we can have this this opportunity to put in a dollar and get five back theoretically, or get ten back, or get twenty back. Um, I don't know if there's ever really been a time, you know, in history that that we've had this opportunity to. Uh, to really invest in our businesses this way, so that's kind of that's what excites me. Yeah, and I think online marketing is still, while you know you might be paying five, ten, or even twenty dollars a click in Google, it's still cheap. You know, we back in another business I owned, we did magazine advertising, and to run a full page ad in a magazine each month was five grand, and we could not really we could track it a little bit, but nowhere near the the granularity we can track online advertising with so you know if comparing your know, newspaper advertising magazine advertising tv advertising to online online still while the cost has gone up over the last few years it's still cheap in comparison and you can determine exactly whether it's working or you know with 80 or 90 percent certainty if it's working and what sort of return it's generating so yeah it's, it's definitely like the tools are amazing today and the things you could see and the things you could track and you know it's a cheap salesperson working 24 7 for you like there's, there's a lot of opportunity there but absolutely you're gonna to have to change the business owner mindset has to change to take advantage of that and it's definitely another part of the business that 10 years ago didn't really exist so it's something that they could have ignored 10 years ago whereas today you just it's, it makes or breaks a business so Yes, definitely. And, and back at the, the top of the conversation, you had kind of asked, you know, what are the things that, that, that are working now that, that we try to stay on the forefront about? And I think that, you know, I try to look at, at big brands and what are the big trends because small business tends to be, you know, a little behind big brands, obviously. And, and in my experience, the construction industry tends to be a little bit behind small biz in general. So if you kind of look at those big business trends, uh, what people are doing, you know, things like video are big right now, uh, reviews, video testimonials, um, voice search, obviously having a, a very nice, uh, optimized mobile website presence. So those things that, that you see that kind of the mainstream businesses are doing, if, you know, the sooner that you can adapt those to, to your small business, your local business, the better off you're going to be. I mean, the faster you can jump on these things, the just the more distance you're going to put between yourself and your competition who are just kind of sitting around waiting for that phone to ring. Yeah, there's definitely a f- first mover advantage as well, right? Like the the people who are at the forefront jumping on these things are getting that they're getting in first, they're getting in at a, at a lower price point, and they're kind of working out how these things work before the mainstream comes along and, and jumps on it. So, yeah. 
Excellent. Uh, anything else, Brendan? Uh, what are the, you know, over the next, I know you have dozens or a couple hundred clients by now. What are the, what do you see or what are you advising as far as the, any big shifts taking place that we haven't really touched on yet? Really is, is that one I talked about before. It's just, it's not online or offline. You, you're dealing with people. So, um, and like you said, Google is trying to, you know, Google is trying to match what people want as closely as possible. So I think if, as long as your marketing strategy is focused at working with people and, and dealing with people, like treating prospects as people and not just numbers or stats or Google rankings, I think that's where the businesses are going to win and really treating it like it is it the website and the online marketing assets really are like a 24 seven salesperson. It's like, like we're doing the podcast for us has been amazing because it's, it's an easy way to clone ourselves. So there are people listening to the podcasts that when I'm asleep, so they're, they're effectively conversations like just like this, people will be listening They're conversations we're having with prospects without having to be there. So, um, yeah, I think just, just having that focus on, you know, what does the customer want? They're a person, not a number, not a, not a stat in Google analytics. And, they're, they're not a ranking in Google. I think that the businesses that treat them like that and just really focus on getting into the, the customer head, customer's head um, and serving the customer, I think, um, you know, those are the ones that are going to win long term. I really couldn't agree more with that. I don't know how much how much more uh, than that I have to offer, uh, but I would, I would just go back to consistency again and making sure that you have the resources to do these things. Uh, like Brendan said, a lot of this stuff is free. You don't really need a lot of money if you if you you know want to do some of these things yourself. But just make sure that someone in your organization is doing these things um, on a regular basis and just thinking about these things and not waiting until ten o'clock at night when you get home from an exhausted day and trying to you know put on your marketing hat then. So um, yeah, I couldn't agree more with the uh, the marketing just being being a part of your business and, and your marketing to people and not to numbers. Yeah, absolutely. So we're coming up on an hour. So should we wrap it up? Any final thoughts? Yeah, sounds good. I mean, uh, let's use you know this as an opportunity to just give people a couple couple uh, pieces of information on maybe how to get started or. If someone's listening to this and they say, all right, well, I understand the value on all this. I see the opportunity here. Uh, what's my first step? What do I do? Who do I call? What do I, what do I search for? Um, what's your recommendation? Mine, well, the first thing we have customers do is just that brainstorming exercise. Work out what, you, you know, if you're spending money on marketing, what, what do you want to sell? So be clear around the products and services you want, you want to promote, you want to sell and have a prioritized list when you're talking with someone and it's probably if you have a website right now is just uh, have a look at the stats so Google Analytics is is the de facto tool for for measuring website performance and um, what visitors are doing on the website and it's free and most websites already have it installed so if you haven't heard about it if you're listening and haven't heard about it before you probably do have it and you if you have an existing web agency um, ask them for the login for it that would be I'd say probably the two starting points just to get you know, cover your bases and have at least go into the conversation armed with at least a little bit of information. And then I guess reach out to, you know, people can talk to us, call or email us or talk to someone that, you know, in your local area or whatever and start a conversation. You know, you really shouldn't walk away from a conversation with an online marketing person confused or not clear on, on what, their recommendations are they should, you might not understand the really technical detail but you should understand what they're proposing and why i think um what do you think yes uh i i definitely uh, agree there i mean take take a good look and we've mentioned it several times in order to really advance forward you need to understand where you are now so whether you're doing these things your, yourself or you're working with a web or marketing company make sure you get a clear snapshot of that if you're working with a marketing company get an idea of what's going on if you're doing AdWords or if you're doing SEO, where you're ranking, uh, what your competitors look like. Just sit down at a computer and do some do some Google searching. Look look at, you know, search for the different services that you offer, the different products that you offer. Uh, look who's showing up. Look what their websites look like and what they might be doing. You don't really, you don't need to get too technical, but just try to put yourself in the shoes of your ideal prospective customer. 
and, and, and really look at your business kind of as objectively as you can. And then, Brendan, on your, on your second part about contacting someone, yeah, I, I re- always recommend contacting someone or a web company or a marketing company that has experience helping mm-hmm. businesses similar to yours. So in our, in, our, uh, in our industry, obviously, we serve as contractors and only contractors. So that's, that's a pretty strong selling point for, for our industry, for our prospects. They understand that there's a, a shorter learning curve there. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We have some good processes for getting our clients results. So no matter what industry you're in, you don't have to go to a, an industry-specific marketing company. But you want to make sure when you have that conversation that they do have some experience with businesses similar to yours. And if possible, if you want to kind of continue that conversation with them, don't be afraid to ask for some case studies or some references um, because this is very important. You're investing your, your hard-earned time and your, your money and your energy into a marketing or web company, uh, you really need to do your due diligence. So I think that's really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally agree. Excellent. Uh, so Brendan, where, where can people find you online if they uh, want to learn more about your services or just get, get up to speed with some of this information that, uh, that you can educate them on? Yeah, it's just, uh, I guess the website is probably the number one place, the search, T-H-E, the search engine shop.com. Fantastic. And uh, over here, you can find a lot of info on our blog, and we're building out our video library at contractordynamics.com. Awesome. All right. Great to talk to you, Joe. You too, Brandon. Always fun. And hope the audience gets some uh, good value out of this. All right. I'll see you next time.